Hey, I'm Robert Herron. Welcome to Techzilla, hands-on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you already own. Whether you're a beginner or a tech support for friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or why Cody P is used to scare off house cats and raccoons, we've got an answer. And if we don't, we'll track down someone who does. We'll just wash our hands before we touch them. Robert Herron's here. Dude. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. It's weird. It's like usually we're over there doing HD Nation. We used to do DLTV in the past, but... Uh, Veronica is at South by Southwest doing the fancy parties, nice. doing the work thing down there for her, her day job. And um, hopefully we'll find out what she saw that was cool at South by Southwest when she comes back next week. Now, I got to say, it's been a really weird day because this is one of those things where we're shooting the day before there's a really big announcement. But I'm going to say we, we got a timely comment from our uh, discussion last week about San Francisco being hell on wireless service. Nathan writes in, Complaining that they never test anything in San Francisco is ridiculous. Try living in rural Fairmont, Minnesota. We finally got a bump in our DSL from 3 megabits to 6 megabits per second. How rural can you be if you have DSL? And then there's the fact that Verizon bought an Altel, so we finally got 3G. The local cable company, aka Midcontinent Communications, has 15 megabit per second service, but as soon as you frost the 15 gig limit, done, and no torrenting is allowed. They limit your throughput horrendously. So far, the DSL company Frontier has been kind to us, Nathan in Minnesota. 15 gigs. 15 gigs. I'm That's, not complaining about Comcast's 250 gig limit again. Uh, yeah, at that 15 point, gigs is limiting. Oh my goodness! Like, like I, there's a five gig five gigabyte cap on my EVDO modem. Okay. Which I think is horrendous. Like per month. Yeah, but 15 gigabytes on a on a cable, that's like five, that's, that's less than, that's probably three and a half, maybe four movie downloads. They must be trying to encourage you up to a different plan, hopefully. Well, it's, it sounds great, right? 15 megabits, which is faster than we can get here, or I can get in San Francisco, probably Go faster out. than you can get in San Leandro. No. Well, for cable. Huh, 20 megabit at home. Uh, not where I am. Oh, well, I, you know what? It bursts 20 megabit. Yeah, it, it runs for the first like, you know, how many percentage of your download? I could pay for 50 back. megabit, but nah, I don't want to do that. That's too much money. But it actually throughput solid 12. That's 12 megabit. Bad. That's actually really good, especially because your download speed is dependent on the speeds of the server at the other end, which can vary ridiculously. Um, you know, the faster their servers are, the more bandwidth their servers have, the faster your downloads are going to be. So I'm still stuck, though. Like, 15 megabit might be nice if the servers at the other end can take advantage, but a 15 gigabyte cap, dude, I, that sucks. I think Nathan might be a fan, then, of the FCC's new national broadband plan. Uh, yeah. 100 million homes with... 100 megabit per second download speeds by 2020. That's, wow. That's pretty much what everybody expects. It's Monday. This report comes out Tuesday. That's pretty much what everybody expects the FCC's national broadband plan to say when it's unveiled this week. Um, that would be about twice the current reach of broad, like high-speed broadband. That's like would be like twice the households, 100 million. I just want to see more competition out there because I think all pricing is overpriced right. at this point for broadband service in the home. But this should be done by the private sector, the private sector. But it's just hard to get those pipes in or to get access <laughs> to those pipes that we can all use. Well, well the, 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 basically, the Supreme Court's basically said you can't use the cable companies lines because the cable company paid for them, but since it was a government established monopoly for the phone lines, you can use the phone lines. And then the, the cost of wiring the last miles is insanely prohibitive. It's 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 gonna be crazy. The talk is the FCC wants benchmarking, pricing reports, and the goal for the next decade is that every American has affordable access to a, a, a gadget actually picked this one out. Um, Robust broadband services, 100 megabit per second down, 50 megabit per second up, which is a huge leap over what most of us have currently. Nice. Now, along with end users, the plan calls for communities to have one gigabit per second service and access to a nationwide wireless interoperable broadband public safety network, quote unquote, all, of course, for first responders. Now, you got to wonder what's who or what is going to pay for all of this. Yeah, at this point, like I'm kind of like you, you know, how many billions in debt have we racked up? And my 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 son's going to be paying off the you know the the bailout and the subsidy plans and the whatever they're calling it. The any let's let's not go well, there. Well, the 500 megahertz <laughs> spectrum auctions. We're told the FCC claims most of the recommendations hmm. won't require any funding because if they auction that bandwidth the available space, then boom, they can do it. And broadband.gov, the FCC's new website, has a beta of its broadband test that I tried out the other day, and along with more information about the upcoming plan. So should be interesting. 
This seems like the FCC is doing more than they ever have about a subject that was long neglected. So. Yeah, this is also going to be one of those insane political footballs because I can already, I, it hasn't even really started yet, and I can already hear the shouting back and forth about this is government's role. This is, I mean, interstate highways, I'd like to see the internet highway system of broadband, but of course I make my living pushing big honking video files over the internet. So of course I want to see the internet highway system of broadband. Um, on a, on a lighter note, reports that it was out there started up mid-January, but Intel finally officially announced the X25-V. It's a value-based, I like that value-based SSD drive. 125 bucks for 40 gigabyte drive. This is the week after OCZ announced the Onyx SATA 2 drive, a sub $100, I think it's like 96 bucks. That's a 32 gigabyte SSD drive. The X25-V has half the channels of the M drives thus lower read-write speeds, because basically they, they do the faster read-write speeds by splitting multiple channels. It's like 10 channels for an X25, the 100 uh, gigabyte drives. Um, the X25M does 250 megabit read, 100 megabit per second write nice. speeds. Uh, the five channel 25V does 125 megabit per second read, 70 megabyte per second write speeds. I, I don't know about you, but I am curious to see benchmarks on this one. I do too. I, I, I'm just glad to see some sub $100 right. price points on these products. But it's still, a tiny drive. It's basically it's your startup drive. And now I'm wondering, should I just use a USB key that has 32 gigs in it? <laughs> yeah, that, uh, I know. I know That's the SSD is going to give me faster performance overall. So yeah, this one's going to be interesting. I'm definitely curious to see benchmarks. You can expect most of the $100-ish bargain SSD drives to have lower capacity, fewer channels, and lower performance than the $250 plus drives. Intel is still claiming though this should be four times faster than a standard 7200 RPM drive, about as fast as a 10,000 RPM drive. One of those big fancy like 300 gigabyte, yeah. 10,000 RPM drives. The Raptor. Uh, yeah, Raptor for significantly less cash. And Intel says trim support is built in. Yeah. Definitely want to see benchmarks, but it could be a nice speed bump. If, like you don't want to spend 250, 300 bucks for a 100 gigabyte SSD. This could be this could be your boot drive and your main operating system drive. Maybe stuff a couple applications on it, some big files. I just like to see the prices coming down, like they are, and scratch performance drives. going up, and more options. It could be your scratch drive when you're oh. working on Photoshop. Dude, I, like you said, a boot drive. I want it to be my boot drive, and I'll yeah. have regular hard drives. Because I, I have an SSD as my boot drive now, no. but 100 Lucky bucks dog. is better than 250 bucks, but my drive's twice as fast. So you know, epic. <laughs>